What's going on guys? Joy Grim 1 aka Chicago Joey here. Welcome to a video on my top five biggest pots I've ever played at online poker. Most of these are going to be the great game of Pot Limit Omaha with hands against guys such as Jeans89, which you can see here at 100-200, Zygmunt, Patrick Antonius, an old school guy named Pat Patman, Guy La Liberté, and we even have one bonus Texas Hold'em hand against Take Chip, the biggest Texas Hold'em hand I've ever played. Some of these pots here are going to be upwards of, this pot's going to end up being uh, 78000 We have a $91,000 pot in there, a few $50,000 pots in there, 5100 Some very fun hands, very deep stacks, very debatable decisions on people's parts in the hands. But I really want to show some of my old school hands. I played a lot of really epic sessions. I played a lot of epic hands over my entire poker career. I don't really talk about them too much. I don't talk about myself a ton on my content, but I really want to start making an effort to do more of that. So yeah, this will be on here. So sit back, enjoy the biggest pots I've ever played. And I get a little fired up because this is taking me down memory lane. Enjoy. I also want to let you guys know tomorrow I got a video coming out called Looking for a Poker Boyfriend. It's going to be me investigating the new poker vlogger Marley's videos. And then me and Marley are podcasting on Thursday. So stay tuned for that. Tomorrow's video. It's going to be hilarious. All right, before we get into the goodies, let's do an honorable mention. Two-card Pop Limit Omaha hand, a.k.a. Nolan Hold'em. This was uh, during the, the middle of my upswing. I was crushing it. I have absolutely no idea why I was playing this table. Ling Yu was an unknown then. I think he was a fun player. We thought he was a fun player in retrospect, but I don't know what I was doing. I just had a bunch of money in my account. I decided, you know what? I'm going to play some Hold'em and take chips to my left. This guy made my life a living hell when I was playing mid-stakes Texas Hold'em before I switched over to Pot Limit Omaha. This guy had my number all the time. I've never been able to beat this guy in my entire life at Hold'em. And uh, that's actually going to play a part here because we have pocket aces on the button with $20,000 in our stack. We make it 600. This guy makes it 1,800. I say, finally, for the love of God, I'm going to get this guy back. This guy's terrorized me. I've never beat this guy. He always has it. And now I'm on the heater. I'm not doing well. I'm playing well. I'm in the zone, practicing discipline. I mean, was I really practicing discipline? I don't know here if I'm playing the no limit hold them. I should not have been playing 100, 200, no limit hold them. Let's put it like that. So uh, I four bet the 4,400. And then, my God, this guy ships it in, baby. <laughs> Gracias, papi. Coramosa. Coramosa. Take chip. Coramosa. He has, uh, he's got Ace King suited. This is kind of sums up my year for the most part. 88% favorite. Very hard to do in Potlum in Omaha. And uh, flop comes down 934. We are officially 99% turn. He is 0%. And we take down our biggest Texas Hold'em pot in our, uh, in our life. $41,000 against Take Chip. Thank you very much, brother. Appreciate that. Much love, man. Let's get into the real hands. The Potlum in Omaha hands. All right, let's start this off with number five against Pat Patman. Pat Patman, rumored to be Durr, I believe, at the time, but it never did really figure out who this guy was. All I know is the guy was a maniac, as you're going to see from some of these hands. So late ski opens it up to 300. This is going to be a $50,000 pot. I have King889, double suited on the button. He's about 13, uh, what's he at? About 13, 12 point some thousand dollars. Late ski, don't really remember too much about him. Play with him a lot, but don't really remember a, a ton about him. And then we got Patrick Antonius, fake love 888 in the small blind. At least I'm pretty sure that's who that was. So I call with the king 889 uh, and Pat Patman is going to complete from the big blind. Flop comes down queen, queen eight. We flop the bottom full house. Uh, late ski is going to check pots 1030 and we go ahead. We make a little bigger bet, a bet 800. I think a bigger bets were a little bit more normal at this time. I think right now, maybe some players would go with a little smaller bet sizing strategy here on the button, but I go ahead, I bet big, I bet 800. Can't really remember, I don't, I'm not sure what my image was to these guys at the time. I know I was, I played a few tables. I think I played a lot of shorthanded and stuff like that. So I'm not sure if I was aggressive or what, you know, what they kind of perceive me as. When I look at my stats in Hold'em Manager, I was playing uh, overall 43-30 with a 16% three bet. So there's a lot of shorthanded in there, which is gonna skew that sample. So definitely, I, I think I was a little bit more, I was a little bit more on the aggressive side thinking back. So. Uh, Pat Patman does go ahead. He check calls and I'm going to put him on a little, he played a really wide range. So I'm going to put him on some flush draws, some Queens, uh, over pair type hands. And, uh, and yeah, he calls, turns the four. So the flush does complete there. Now things get crazy. So he checks, I bet 1800 betting for value, get value from flushes, obviously Queens. And, uh, he check raises me to 7,100 and I say, oh no, this is, this is, uh, 
I know what's I know what's coming here. And now we had a pretty aggressive dynamic with each other. We played some massive pots where he showed down bluffs, I showed down bluffs. So I'm not gonna fold a Pat Patman here. When I think about what he has, I definitely think he could be turning some hands into bluffs. Maybe I think he's bluffing a little bit too much. What are those hands gonna be? Um, it's a really good question. You know, the hand that he shows up with, we'll show you at the end here. I do block kings because I have that king in my hand, but he certainly could have one heart, could have an ace of hearts, could have a king of hearts. Uh, I don't, he, sometimes maybe he'll check raise a queen with a blocker in it as well too. Um, maybe semi-bluffing that situation. I mean, this guy's insane, honestly. He might just have an inside straight draw type of hand, turning that into a bluff as well. So I'm not going to fold. I'm going to call. And sometimes I think in Potlinoma, you have to call and pray against the Psychotic Maniacs. I think we've all pretty much been there before. Uh, Rivers, the six. He goes all in. So he basically check raised. I, I thought it was kind of weird. He check raised the turn and to set himself up with a perfect pot size all in bet on the river. So to me, it just felt a little fishy. And as I said before, you know, sometimes they got it and you end up losing $50,000 pots at 5,100. So I pretty much called instantly and he's got the king, king, three, four. So he did turn that four. So he did block the, uh, the queen four there. He also had the king of hearts. So I guess he had a couple good blockers, but I mean, yeah, I mean, it seems like a bad bluff in, uh, but that's his style. I mean, this guy's style, like I said, running, gunning, putting a lot of money in there, a lot of pressure on you. And, um, and yeah, I certainly could have considered folding this hand against some other players, but against Pat Patman specifically, I did not, I, I closed my eyes. I called, I was like, glory be to God. I can't believe it. This guy's a maniac. He's bluffed off 25,000 of me. So it was, uh, yeah, man, that was a, a great hand, great feeling. And, um, Let's see where it goes from here. All right, so I've not looked at this hand for a bit here. Uh, definitely looks like a very hard table in retrospect. AZN Baller was big rag. The Liar, I'm pretty sure the Liar must have made millions of dollars playing online poker. Ben 86, and then Zygmunt, who I think Zygmunt, what you'd consider the uh, action player in this lineup. And 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 uh, yeah, so it's 5,100. It looks like an anti-table as well, too. So we've got Ace Ace 9 4 under the gun, one suit, about $20,000 here. We get three bet by the liar to one 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 point three one, and um, yeah, I think I, I don't think he's gonna be three betting me super wide. I, I, most people weren't really three betting under the gun raises very wide at this point in time. I don't think they still are. And then uh, Illery cold four bets it here, and now Illery is certainly crazy where he can have some double suited type king type hand. He doesn't know, always have to have aces here, but. When you face another gun and then the, under, under gun plus one, three bets. And then when you're in the small blind, I'm most of the time you're probably going to have aces here when you think about it. So, but like I said, he's also psychotic. And I guess here to me, there's really nothing else I can do besides make the, uh, make the five bet and try to get a lot of money in pre-flop against a hand like a double suited Kings. And then if you have aces, you know, we got to pray we don't lose. So we four bet to 12,813. The liar goes all in. Hillary just calls, and now I say, oh, boy, fuck six. What does this motherfucker have? Flop comes down, seven, four, deuce. We have the ace of spades, block the nut flush draw, have the four in our hand. Most likely, we're not going to be behind this situation. And uh, Hillary shoves for my last 8,000, and I'm going to call. He's going to show down the ace, king, 10, three. I mean, we couldn't ask for it, but and when we see the liar saying queen, nine, six, seven, very disrespectful three bet by the liar, which, which I guess, you know, the big takeaway is, is that he just thought that, um, he thought that he could definitely take advantage of me and wanted to have this hand in his three bet range. Large son of gun. I think it's probably too wide, but, um, but I mean, yeah, it's what kind of makes some of these guys tough to play against. They certainly mixed it up pretty well. And then Hillary, I probably would just call that hand. I don't think I would four bet that hand. If he, for him to four bet that hand, I think he has to expect that I'm opening up super wide, which is probably true. The liars three betting, Super wide too, which looks like it is true. So maybe in retrospect, his four bet isn't that bad. Most likely, the most likely scenario is that he's probably going to get all in here, pre-flop against the liar and be pushing some equity against the liar. And maybe sometimes the liar does fold as well too. So uh, yeah, I mean, he does block the, uh, the the aces with the ace king. I mean, a beautiful hand, double suit hand. Can't really fault him for that. But he gets it all in here and he has a backdoor flush draw and a gutter. This is very, 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 very good for me against Hillary. Turns the king, so he does turn that pair. I'm going to have to avoid a lot of cards on the river. I actually don't remember what happens here. The jack, let's go, baby. 51,000, I remember this. I was like, man, what kind of bullshit is this guy going to have? 
And then he shoves all in. I said, oh boy, anyone but Hillary. Don't let me lose to this guy. Don't let me lose to the queen nine, six, seven, please. And we do take this pot down. $51,000 pot goes our way. Thank you very much. Let's see the next one. All right. Back to 5,100. I think this is an ante as well, too. We are super deep here. We got $34,000 at this table. We uh, got Ben86, the liar. Chip Uniter was a guy who bounced up and down the stakes. He, he would go on these very sick heaters. I don't remember him being someone who I thought was bad, but certainly had a lot of variance to his game. Hillary's in the mix, and then Turkin89. Turkin89, I think he was like a very old school kind of guy. I'm pretty sure that he was a, a pretty good winner at, at the game of poker. So we have Jack 9, 9, 10, double suited, beautiful hand. The liar opens up uh, middle position. Hillary calls in the button, obviously calling here from the big blind. Flop comes down 9, 5, 4 with uh, flush draw. We have backdoor hearts, backdoor straight draw, top set with a quad draw. Beautiful hand. I'm loving it. Checks to Hillary. He's going to bet 800 into 1100. And then we have a decision. We are very, very deep here. I think the standard is just going to be to check raise. When we do get called, it's going to put us in some spots. But. There is a chance if we do raise, I mean, there's a good chance. There's a chance against a player like an Hillary, we can get a lot of money in here on this flop here. And I don't really remember the dynamic that we did have, but if we do have an aggressive dynamic, there might be some hands that he might just decide to, to uh, call here and then shove the turn with. He has got a worse two pair type hand. If he happens to have a set here, which is obviously very hard, he might just get all the money in here thinking he has a little bit extra fold equity against me and I'm getting a little bit out of line. Whereas against other players, maybe they just call and see a turn and, and then they kind of maybe try to get the showdown or they try to turn their hand to a bluff on some cards. So, um, so yeah, I think this is a pretty normal check raise here, 3,500. And he calls the turn is the three. Obviously, we don't have the best hand now. What do I think Hillary has? You know, I think his range is going to be a little bit wider here to continue, but he's going to have a lot of flush draws, combo draws, two pair type hands as well. And I think he's going to turn all of those hands into a bluff here when I check. So I check. He bets 5,100. And um, I've always said I'm going to go ahead and call. Hope to see a non-spade river. Obviously hope to pair the board on the river. If it does board does pair, I probably would lead, hoping that to get value from a straight at that point. I wouldn't expect him to. I mean, I don't know if that's necessarily going to be good or bad in the situation, but I, I think that I wouldn't expect him to bluff the the river if the board does pair. Once I check call, I, I wouldn't expect him to. And if he had a straight, I don't know if he would always bet it. If I if he has a straight, I don't think he's ever going to fold it. So it's kind of one of those decisions where where you start. And in terms of protecting my range, I don't think I, I didn't play enough with Hillary to really have to worry about things like that against him specifically. So I can play this spot pretty exploitive. And I do check call. River is the king. I check. He pots it. And... Um, I don't know, man. You know, I, like I said, I've definitely seen Hillary play some crazy hands. I think he's going to be bluffing here more often than other players are. We don't have any spades in our hand. You know, sometimes you call and pray. And we call, we pray. I don't really think it needs much. I don't think much needs to be said about this river. And he's got the two, four, six, three. This motherfucker. He's got the straight, second nut straight. And uh, we lose $54,000 pot. I was heartbroken. I was sad. I was like, oh my God, for fuck's sakes. If I'm going to lose a $54,000 pot, at least have me get all in pre-flop, okay? I don't want to make a bad decision on the river, but from some of these hands you're seeing, these, these games play pretty aggressive, and when you're playing deep stacks, you're going to have to make big calls. Sometimes you're going to be right. Sometimes you're going to be wrong. That goes with the game. You got to get the fuck over it. You got to move on to the next hand. You got to try to evaluate when you look back on your hands like this. You have to evaluate, did you, did you think you made the right play? Was he actually bluffing you enough in this situation to justify it? And I have absolutely no problem with this call in retrospect too. And um, yeah, that's it. Move on to the next hand. Bum, 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 bum. One of my favorite hands in the history of my entire poker career. I was on a massive upswing at this point in time. This was September 14, 2012. I uh, I called out jeans on the forum. I said, I'm going to stack jeans 89. I'm coming for him because I never really played a big pile with him up until this point. And he was certainly one of the best players and probably still one of the best players at the great game of Popman Omaha in the entire world. And I think at this table, it's 100, 200, which I didn't play much, but I was just on an upswing. I'm like, fuck it. I want to play. This guy, uh, Billy Wallbach, was in the game. And um, I don't, you know, in retrospect, I don't think he's a bad player. No, I don't, didn't play much with him. But um, it was enough for me to sit down. 
gamble it up there. No gamble, no future. We got a six, seven, four, one suit. They're certainly a little bit loose, but in my when I perceive uh, Wallback to be the weaker player in the game, I'm definitely gonna be opening this hand from the cutoff. Jeans was a little bit tighter overall too, so I'm not. I'm just really wasn't worried about that. I was looking to play pots against Wallback in the big blind. Jeans does three bet, and was this a time? I think my friend was uh, railing me during this point in time, and I remember this too. Is this cheating? I don't know. I was saying, I'm like, man, against Jeans, out of position. This guy runs so goddamn good. I've never, I've never seen him lose. Never seen him lose. So I was like, I'm gonna fold. He's like, man, you can't fold. A six seven four, bro, you can't fold. So I said, okay, I'll call. That can't be out of line. I don't know. Tio, what? What? You know, is what it is. Uh, we call flops five seven three. Let's get it, baby. Straight backdoor full house draw, backdoor quad draw, backdoor Bangkok, aka backdoor nut flush. This is. The world, this is God. This is the best flap ever. I'm shaking. I'm literally shaking right now. When I play, I wish, I'm like, holy sh fucking shit. This is going to be, this is going to be one of the biggest pots I've ever played in my entire life. I think at this point, I actually might have been the biggest pot I've ever played in my entire life. The most amount of money. I have $33,000 sitting in front of me here. So I check, he bets 3,200. And now I'm like, man, I just want, I want to get more money in here. I got the next trade. I don't want a four to come. I don't want a six to come. I don't want an eight to come. I don't want a nine to come. Maybe I don't even want some board print cards to come here. So I'm thinking about, I'm going to check raise. Maybe this looks like to him a board that I am going to attack, 573. Maybe that's going to be a better uh, better board for my range, even though I don't know how much of those lower kind of connected hands I'll be opening. But I do think I'm going to be I'm gonna have a little bit more of those hands in my range. So I think Jeans is aware enough of that to say, okay, maybe he's going to be attacking me here. So there's going to be some hands he might just shove all in with here. Or there's going to be some hands he might call and then shove the safe turn if that safe turn does come down. And right here, I'm looking to stack this guy. And I can't stack this guy unless I check raise the flop. Man, I'm just bringing back some crazy, crazy hand right here, bro. I check raise small, 8,200. I'm trying to make it look weak. I'm trying to make it look like I'm trying it. I, you know, I'm just I'm attacking him, man. He can't have it. He's got aces. This jeans type player, right? Maybe there was some kind of meta game where you know he people called him tight, so he I'm sure he's very aware of all these things. And best, like I said, one of the best players in the history of pot in Omaha. So I make it small, little enticing check raise there. Look like I'm trying to buy the pot, get maybe a little out of line, and uh, he goes all in. I'm actually shaking again. I'm fucking. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> if I fucking lose here, if I fucking lose. A $70,000 pot when I flop the nuts against this goddamn guy from Finland, Jeans89, who runs so good and is just up millions of dollars. I was going to quit the great game forever. No, I wouldn't have. But, um, you know, this was definitely a shot for me. I put it like that. We go all in. He calls. He has ace, ace, six, eight. Backdoor Bangkok with the backdoor nut flush draw. Backdoor quad draw. Open and a straight draw. And I am like, holy crap. Please, for the love of God, please, for the love of God, turn the six. And I thought I lost. I thought I lost. I was like, oh, no, I lost. I was like, oh, I'm drawing dead. And then I looked at his hand. I'm like, oh, my God. No, oh, wait, no. Okay. River, the king, we take it down. $71,000 pot. The biggest pot I believe I've ever won in my entire life. Spoiler. Actually, it's not a spoiler. Or no, maybe it doesn't. No, I don't know. Maybe a spoiler. But uh, biggest pot I ever won in my entire life. It's just crazy because in the forum, I said, I was like, I'm, gonna, I'm coming for you, Jeans. I'm coming for I'm kidding. I'm not trying to come for Jeans. one of the best players. But it's just crazy how it happened. It happened so quick. Everyone in the forums was watching. Everyone's railing, man. Everyone's freaking out, going crazy because I was on such a... I was such a heater at this point in time. And uh, man, what a glorious time. What a glorious, glorious, glorious time. Ay, 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 baby. Let's move on to the next hand. I'm loving this video. I need to do more videos like this. Whew. All right, back to 51. Uh, same players. Patrick Antonio is here. Fake love. Pat Patman. We got Barcode in here. The Dang Brothers. And uh, Late Ski. Ace Ace 8 2 here. One suit. Got about 69,000. Holy shit. Uh, we to, okay, this was actually the hand. Uh, so I, that was I, after I beat Pat Patman out of a big pot. I believe this was uh, this was later in that session. So Ace Ace Eight Two, we raise it up here, one suit. We get three bet by Pat Patman on the button, it, and I'm just gonna call here. I'm not really looking to four bet here and play. A, he's thirty five thousand dollars deep. I'm just, I mean, I'm not loving any any answer here. I'm not loving. I I'm, I was definitely knitting up loving. I sixty nine thousand dollars to the table. I'm not trying to lose. $35,000. I just basically, I don't want a four bet. And then he calls and then I say, oh, you know, I got to put a lot of money here and a lot of flops. So 
I play it conservative. I call it retrospect. I'm doing the same thing. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it, man. Knitting it up. And uh, this motherfucker, fake love, Patrick Antonius, he decides to four bet here. And uh, in my mind, I'm saying like, okay, this is kind of cool because now Pat Padman's going to fold, hopefully. But I'm also thinking maybe he's going to call and then I got, what am I going to do? <laughs> like, I got to go all in, don't I? <sighs> so he goes all in and I say, I've never folded aces preflop in my entire life. Never have. And Beric Dive God, I never will fold aces preflop. He might have kings. Maybe he's got a hand like king, king, something like that. We get it in really good. What does fake love have? I think that, you know, Patrick Antonius could have had something a little bit more out of line, double suited type uh, high card hand that he didn't want to three bet. But once Pat Patman, who's been playing pretty aggressive, decides to squeeze, then, um, you know, maybe, 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 right? So, uh, I make the biggest raise of my entire life. I click the $69,000 button and he calls. What do you think he has? What do you think Patrick Antonio says? You're not going to believe it. This motherfucker's got Queen Jack 10 5 double suited, okay? The guy put in 35,000 with the Queen Jack 10 5 double suited and PA's got the other aces. I say, "Oh shit." Look at him. He's a favorite. 44% gets his money in, gets in 35,000 with Queen Jack 10 5 double suited. He's a favorite. Are you for real? Flop comes down four six six. I'm I'm saying, oh boy. Please don't let me lose the seventy eight thousand dollar pot to the queen jack ten five. Turns the queen. I say no. You give this guy two flush draws. No one's ever missed two flush draws in the history of the game. Two flush draws, or a queen. One queen's dead. One card to come. I'm playing for the chop against PA, but a big pot. River is the seven. Motherfucker. Who is this guy? Someone find out Pat Pat. I need to meet this fucking guy, man. I'm swear I'm getting fired up in this video right now. It's crazy. I can't believe it. Queen Jack 10 5. What the fuck is this guy doing? What's he doing? Whatever. Last hand, move on. I gotta get over it. I don't get what he's doing. What is he doing? I mean, I've made worse plays. I just don't get it. All right, last hand. This is at 5,100. I, I actually don't know. This is pot's just big. It's the biggest pot I've ever played. I, I don't I don't know if I would have won the whole entire pot. I don't believe I would have because actually, no, it would have been close. So this one's Gila Liberté, Zifferin. Gila Liberté is in the big blind. He is uh, obviously one of the biggest losing players of all time in the history of online poker, but he wasn't necessarily that bad. And my, this is one of my first times playing with him, so I want to play a lot of pots with him. And this hand certainly is not an open preflop, but I did want to play hands with him in the big blind, so I am going to get a little out of line with this open right here. I make it 400. Call, call. So we got Tally Star in the mix too. Benny Spindler, Ronnie R, Ronnie R, legendary a Potman Omaha player. Benny, Benny Spindler, a psychotic Potman Omaha player. And we got my man Jonas Lika in the small blind here. Shout out Jonah, uh, Jonas, uh, podcast guest in the past. He three bets. Gil Liberté calls, and I say, I ain't folding, man. You know, you know the motto. We don't fold three bets around here. We call. Ronnie R calls, and goddamn Ben fucking 86 has to go all in. And I'm saying, the one was this. This was uh, this was actually earlier in the year, uh, 4 14, 2012. So I was I was on I was on massive upswing. I'm saying, fuck it. I'm gambling. I'm running so hot. I don't care. So it gets uh, Tally Star calls. Lika goes all in. He goes, oh, obviously I can't fold. I don't care what I have. I'm not folding now. Maybe I, I would have considered, you know, I, I, there's a scenario I fold, but I'm obviously not folding now at this point in time. I'm, I, I, that's it. What do you do? You put it in. That is what it is. You put it in. Ronnie R calls. Everyone's all in pre-flop here. The pot's $91,000. Are you guys for real? Let's look at some hands. Gila Liberté has ace, queen, queen, seven, double suited. Lika, who put it all in pre-flop, has the ace, ace, king, six, obviously. Ronnie R has got the four, four, deuce, deuce. Ben 86, a very questionable queen, queen, 10 deuce. But I think in retrospect, he's thinking that he's going to go all in. Tally Star is going to fold. Lika is going to re-isolate all in. And Lika was deep enough with Zifferin and with me that we would have both folded, maybe. Ronnie R probably calls. He's closing there. Maybe he doesn't. I don't know. I don't know what he's thinking. He gets the only 9%, though. It is what it is. Uh, Tally Star has got the king, 8, 9, 6, double suited. And I mean, I guess, you know, if if he does go all in and Tally Star folds, a lot of dead money out there. If Flicka goes all in, 
And then if the other people fold, he's, we, yeah, I mean, he's, it, it seems, um, I definitely can understand where he's coming from. Queen, queen, 10, deuce. A little bit loose, Ben 86. But who are we to question the god, Ben 86? And uh, yeah, flop comes down. Eight, we got a set. But unfortunately, we are drawing dead. Look at this, 0%. How does it feel to flop a set in a $91,000 six-way all-in pot and be drawing to 0%? That's actually impossible until right now because Ben 86 has the other 10. We have no outs here. This is the saddest thing I've ever seen. So Lika's got top set with the king. Ben 86 has the straight draw. Our backdoor hearts are not good. And we cannot make a backdoor straight flush because Tally Star has the eight of hearts. This is just sad. This is sad. What's the turn? Turns the five. Who's got outs here? Lika, 67%. How, how do aces win? Are you guys... Ay, ay, ay. It's, it's an unreal. 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 What are the equities pre-flop here? So Lika has 26 percent He has the best hand with aces. That's actually crazy. Uh, with the card shown, Gila Liberté has 3%. <laughs> we have 17%. So I think we made a good play. Ronnie R is 25%. Tally Star 21%. Ben 86, 9%. So best hand won. Fuck you, Jonas. I, yeah, yeah. How does he do it? I was so, I wasn't even sad at this point when I lost this. I'm like, well, I made a terrible play. I probably shouldn't have done that, but it is what it is. And no gamble, no future. But obviously if I win that pot, it's the biggest pot I've ever won in my entire life. But instead it turns into the biggest pot I've ever been a part of that I've lost. Not the most money I've lost, but the biggest pot I've lost. So that's it. That's my hands, guys. Let me know what you think about my hands. And uh, I'll walk down memory lane. That is what it is, guys. Much love. Take care. Peace out. See you later.